In this video, we'll look at characteristic chemical reactions that mark out acids. So let's begin by revising our comparison of the properties of acids and bases. Acids taste sour, whereas bases taste bitter. Acid-base indicators will change colour depending on which type, which type of chemical they come into contact with, the classic example being litmus, which turns red in an acid and blue in a base. Acids and bases also, if they're mixed, neutralise each other's properties, and they can corrode materials, although the chemical reactions that occur during the corrosion are different for acids and bases. So we're going to look specifically at some of these characteristic reactions that acids undergo. So here are those reactions. I've written them out here in a generic form. I'm not going to specify what acid or what base or what metal or what carbonate at this point. The point is that as long as you know what class of substance is reacting, the reaction will always follow the same general form. The neat thing about this is that once you choose what your reactants are going to be, you can predict what the products of the reactions will be. So these are our reactions. Let me introduce them to you first and then I'll go through and give examples. The first is dissociation. Here an acid molecule that's dissolved in water splits up and when it does so, the result is one or more protons and whatever the remaining anion is. Remember that the protons, or hydrogen ions, can also join up with water to form hydronium ions. The next is a neutralization reaction. When an acid reacts with a base, the result is a salt, an ionic compound, and water. The next two reactions are kinds of corrosion. When an acid reacts with a metal, the metal is eaten away and the products are a salt and hydrogen gas. When an acid reacts with a carbonate, the carbonate is eaten away and a salt and carbon dioxide gas and water are produced. Before I go into examples, I just want to remind you of Bronsted's and Lowry's definitions of acids and bases, because we'll look at each of the reaction examples in the context of these definitions. Remember that an acid is a chemical that when it reacts, it donates a proton or a hydrogen ion to something else. That is, it will lose a proton itself. Bases are the opposite, something that accepts a proton during a chemical reaction. First of all, dissociation. When an acid is dissolved in water, it will dissociate and release hydrogen ions. If the molecule, which is originally neutral, has lost a positively charged hydrogen ion, then what is left must be an anion. For instance, hydrochloric acid will dissociate to give a hydrogen ion, which is positive, and a chloride ion, which is negative. Acetic acid, which is the acid in vinegar, has this structure. When it dissociates, it gives a proton and the acetate ion. Sulfuric acid dissociates to give two hydrogen ions and a sulfate ion. In fact, this dissociation can happen in two steps. First, the sulfuric acid dissociates to give one proton and the hydrogen sulfate ion and then the hydrogen sulfate ion can itself act as an acid, dissociating to give a second proton and the sulfate ion. So is the acid donating its proton? Well, it's certainly losing it. And if you remember, the proton does not hang around by itself for very long. It bonds with a water molecule to form a hydronium ion. So the acid is donating its proton to a water molecule and the water molecule is accepting a proton. So in this context, the water is acting like a base. The next reaction is neutralization. Remember that we know that when acids and bases meet each other, they neutralize each other's properties. But how? Let's take the example of hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. What happens? Well, the products are a salt and water. So where does the water come from? It's formed by the hydrogen ion from the acid bonding with the hydroxide ion from the base. This is why acids and bases neutralize each other. And once that has happened, what's left? Well, the anion from the acid, the chloride, and the cation from the base are left, and it's these that form the salt. And in this case, it is actually table salt, sodium chloride. Let's try another example. Phosphoric acid reacting with magnesium hydroxide. Okay, so the products are water again. The protons from the acid will react with the hydroxide ions to give water. I'm not worrying about balancing the equation yet, just what the products are. Okay, if we assume all the hydrogens and hydroxides are used up, what's left? The anion from the acid is phosphate and the cation from the base is magnesium. So the salt product is magnesium phosphate. 
and now we can balance it. Next we'll look at acids reacting with metals. Not all metals react with acids, but of those that do, this is the way they do it. Let's look at nitric acid reacting with iron. So one product we know, it's hydrogen gas. Where does that come from? Well it must be the protons from the acid, there are no other hydrogen atoms here. So they become the hydrogen gas. So then the salt must be formed from the metal and from the anion left over from the acid. So that would give us iron nitrate. And then we can balance the reaction. How about another? Sulfuric acid reacting with magnesium. One product is hydrogen and the other will be made from the metal and the acid anion. So magnesium sulfate. Now here's an interesting one. You know that when you put sodium metal into water it reacts, unlike many other metals. This turns out to be a very similar reaction and this is what happens. Water and sodium give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Can you see the link? Here water is acting as an acid. It is donating protons to form the hydrogen gas and then the remaining anion from the acid is hydroxide. So the salt that is formed is sodium hydroxide. Finally we have acids and carbonates. When I say carbonates I mean any ionic substance that has carbonate as its anion. So sodium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate and also hydrogen carbonate such as sodium hydrogen carbonate. Any of these will work in this kind of generic reaction. So let's try sulfuric acid and sodium carbonate. Two of the products we know they are carbon dioxide gas and water. The salt is again going to be formed from the anion of the acid and the metal cation from the carbonate salt. Notice that the carbon dioxide and the water have been formed by the carbonate ion combining with the protons from the acid. The acid has donated its protons to the carbonate which is then split into carbon dioxide and water.